Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm a commentator to the uh, pieces presented by uh, Professor Kalinowski. Uh, I want to, actually this uh, paper was not uh, the finished one, it's on, ongoing, it's on, on the uh, phase of developing. So I want to raise some questions and some um, constructive suggestions. Um, in this topic, uh, the title is From Developmental State to Development Cooperation. Uh, when the Charles Johnson, who coined the, the very concept, the developmental state, in 1982, and his book was published. In 1999, uh, when Meredith Wu Cummings edited a volume on developmental state, uh, Charles Johnson, he uh, recalled when his book was published in English, actually his book was uh, in uh, Asian countries, it's well accepted, and uh, the the word, the, con the very concept, developmental state, is uh, in some positive sense, but when his book was published in the U.S., uh, it was the reputation is very negative, because that's during the era of uh, Cold War. So uh, the scholars and uh, journalists and uh, intellectuals they just divide the market economy and plan economy. But actually, there are many people who was uh, kind of uh, market. Ideologist, uh, ideological or uh, plan ideological. But in reality, most of the even the capitalist countries they are in some sense some interventionist. No, you know, uh, in the history of capitalist development, no country, the so-called the uh, advanced countries, from the beginning they have some uh, some percentages or some uh, degree of state intervention. So uh, when we try to talk about developmental state, we should think of the origin and the, the, how this concept was uh, accepted in the uh, scholars and, and from citizens, and why we still keep this concept, the developmental state. Uh, in my view, uh, when we talk about developmental state, it has uh, some negative connotations, whether we uh, like it or not. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, each and every capitalist uh, state, the state intervention uh, is uh, the common, it's not exceptional. So, in what sense uh, you just uh, talk about in South Korea, we still have some legacy of developmental state. And uh, you try to make some new uh, conceptualization, uh, retreat. Not extension, but retreat. I do not, uh, I cannot ca capture the, uh, the nuance of that word, the very word, retreat. What does it mean? So I cannot just uh, show you some alternative concept, but it, it seems somewhat odd. And uh, when you try to say something from developmental state to something from A to B, is that developmental state to development cooperation is the uh, same uh, horizon or is some, some different uh, categorical uh, terrain? I'm wondering. Um, when I read the, 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 the article, it's not yet uh, finished, but it seems to me uh, development cooperation is a kind of state function. Uh, Korean state try to assist or promote the uh, the private sectors, even uh, after the the, the uh, dismantle of the Cold War system and after the new liberalization. Korean state still survived. It uh, will, it's not a dead duck. It's still barking duck. But uh, my question is: Is the Korean developmental state? Is the in intervention in this uh, ODA area is, is somewhat uh, exceptional? How was the other countries, even including the so-called liberal capitalist uh, countries, including US and UK? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you include these African countries. I'm wondering when the US and the Japan or the uh, the European countries, when they invested, when they expanded their market to 
say, these African countries, what did they do? What is some assistance? Is there just company? Each and every company, they just to go alone. So uh, in order to uh, make some new um, uh, argument, I think you should be careful to compare all the other uh, countries. And what's the uh, characteristic in this developmental state legacies in Korean case? That's my uh, comment. And, and uh, Jin Wo-sang just commented uh, uh, the Korean case. When you talk about political economy, international uh, studies of political economy of international relations, I really think we just uh, totally ignore the political side of the story. We uh, focus on the economic side of the story. Uh, but we should take into consideration that historical context, not only the regional, the varieties of capitalism. But I, 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 this is my uh, last comment. Uh, we are making our history, but it was uh, given to us. So in that uh, area, we were still uh, entangled with that uh, power relations. So in our uh, observation, Korean state has some role playing in this uh, global economic field. But I think uh, the other countries, they already had their own advantages. That's the reason why they don't need some overt, some uh, assist from their state. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, OK, then uh, next commentator is the uh, Professor uh, Jong Han Ang. Uh, he is the uh, Professor of the Department of Political Science uh, at Jong University. OK, Professor Ang, um, please. <clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Jae Hung An, and I am teaching at Aju University uh, in the Department of Political Science. Uh, Professor Kim provides us two <clears throat> conflicting messages. The East Asian models have not ended yet, but it has problems with uh, uh, <clears throat> unsustainable. Un oh, unsustainable growth regimes. I think uh, Professor Kim's uh, <coughs> papers uh, contribute a lot uh, in terms of uh, he provide, uh, I'm sorry. Where am I going? Okay. Uh, he provide, <coughs> suggests us a detailed classification of production regimes of Korea and China and Japan, and he characterized uh, East Asian uh, political economy uh, production regimes in terms of hybrid, hybridization uh, rather than uh, dis displacement. Uh, he argues that we are not trans <coughs> transitioning into other type or particularly uh, Anglo-American type of models. We still keep our <coughs> legacy of uh, development state uh, this is what uh, <clears throat> he argues. Uh, <clears throat> I am political scientist, and Professor Kim is economist, and so I'm not a relevant uh, person to evaluate his uh, arguments uh, in terms of economic uh, terminology. So I, lo I learned a lot, and I, I would like just to suggest a couple of ideas from a <clears throat> the perspective of political economy. Uh, let me talk about uh, methodology. Uh, Professor Kim uh, conducted uh, sort of comparative case studies. Uh, I mean, the method of uh, differences. So when uh, countries share similarities, then we control the similarities and select a independent variables and <clears throat> explain differences in dependent variable uh, in terms of uh, differences in independent variables. Uh, then so I would like to <clears throat> raise a question that are there many, uh, much similarities enough to compare between Korea and China? The size is different and political <clears throat> regimes are different. And so they just uh, sh share uh, the reading, leading role of the state. So. I think uh, Professor Kim uh, uh, 
would be uh, this paper would be better if it shows there are much similarities between <clears throat> three countries, and then try to argue that it, it is the matter of the state reading roles in responding to globalization. <clears throat> uh, in terms of theory, uh, Peter Gravich in 1986 suggests a uh, kind of both method and theory that's a kind of image reversed. So he emphasized we need to compare domestic responses to global impact. <clears throat> then uh, we need it. So when we discuss uh, domestic responses, then uh, we need to discuss political institutions and uh, uh, <clears throat> tripartite organizations and, and, and so. So for example, uh, Assemble also emphasized the role of uh, political institutions when he explains why nation fails and why, why certain a number of nations are successful in economic growth. <clears throat> so the state alone is too big a concept. As I told, we need to analyze institutions of political processes and institution mediating interests such as tripartite actors. Uh, my second suggestion uh, is <clears throat> uh, Professor Kim's uh, characterized uh, the transformation three countries have been undergoing uh, in terms of hybridizations, uh, it means it argues that different types of institutions that coexist and so, uh, East Asian countries have not yet abandoned uh, their legacy of development state, but they are changing. So then I would suggest post-development state is a relevant concept. So in Korea, so, <clears throat> Uh, scholars uh, have a reservation in using the concept of development state because development state is regarded as a prime factor of authoritarianism. So, in fact, uh, government and government after democratization, so they, <coughs> they try to dismantle the legacy of uh, development state. But I would argue that development state and political democracy are not necessarily are mutually exclusive. For example, the small welfare state in Western Europe, they also reinforce the supply side economy by state intervention. The, the, the state even inter, <clears throat> intervened into the tripartite, tripartite relations. So I think development of state can coexist uh, and can develop uh, with political t uh, democracy in tandem, I mean, together. <clears throat> So also, the state intervention in some countries is a functional equivalent to the role of a centralized organization. Uh, in countries like Denmark and uh, Holland, the degree of unionization is low comparatively, and the organ union organization is decentralized. Even that, under that uh, unfavorable <clears throat> conditions, they achieved uh, tripartite relations and they achieved both economic growth and social policy. So, I would, uh, I would, uh, add, this is also the Professor Kim's argument. And, uh, legacy of development state, ethnicism, I mean, it's, uh, based on nationalism are still alive. So, rather than emulate, emulate, emulating a younger Anglo American style welfare capitalism, tripartite actors in Korea had better pursue non-liberal welfare capitalism. That fits uh, coordinated market economy embedded in Korean society and state. Uh, let me, uh, my third suggestion, suggestion is uh, about the questions. So what I missed in this uh, study. <clears throat> uh, Professor Kim shows figure 10, uh, as, as you may remember, flex security triangles. And I think he evaluated very highly uh, German and Swedish models. And they achieved, uh, they, in that, uh, 
they, their expenditures on ALMP is very high. Also, they expend a lot of money to uh, <clears throat> unemployment policies, and they achieve the low degree of uh, labor flexibility. I think underneath those type of combination of policies, income policy have worked. I would argue that income policy for a virtuous circle in those countries, a core policy sustaining welfare capitalism. Uh, <clears throat> if we uh, study the history of social policy, the state provide social policies in exchange for uh, workers' wage restraint. That is the whole industry of welfare state in Western countries. But in Korea, it, it was only Kim Young Sam's government who tried to implement uh, income policy, but it failed, as uh, you may you know. So it was opposed by external forces, <clears throat> external forces. But it is very strange that no government, after Kim Young Sam, uh, government sought to implement income policy. They did not even put uh, income policy as a political agenda. I would say, without implementing income policies, there is no way for us to uh, combine social policies and uh, labor market policies. I think I have already used the time. OK? Yes. Uh, finally, uh, it, it is my final suggestions. And, uh, it, it is based on my research, so uh, we can uh, <clears throat> categorize the current West European countries into four st styles, and uh, this is, uh, these countries have achieved high, <clears throat> high uh, score of centralization, but even though the, these de decentralized countries have accomplished tripartite our relations based on the strong intervention from the state. So that is the case of Denmark and <laughs> Netherlands. They shifted from this, oh, I mean, this area into this area after globalization. And those two countries are highly evaluated as a model case of a welfare state after globalization. So we, we, have, we may have two alternatives for uh, to achieve a post-development state while, uh, <clears throat> uh, while uh, enjoying a political democracy. Uh, one is this uh, Swedish and Austrian model, and the other is a Danish and uh, <clears throat> Dutch model. But I would suggest uh, I would say that the Dutch model is relevant nowadays in Korea because uh, in order to accomplish uh, Swedish and Austrian model, then we need to integrate two <coughs> confederations, confederations of labor movement. It, as of now, said it is almost impossible uh, unless Korean society uh, experiences another economic crisis like uh, under the, uh, like under the regime of uh, Kim Dae-jung in 1998. So this route would leave labor movement divided, so, but induce social consultation through interventions. So we have a good legacy of the state. So as of now, these options uh, is, it seems promising and realistic. Uh, promising in that uh, these two countries achieved the virtuous circle in the year of globalization, and realistic uh, in that enhancing legislative process of uh, mobilizing majorities in legislation process, which is uh, which needs uh, for a state intervention, that option is plausible relative to unifying the divided and decentralized labor movement. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor uh, Ang, and uh, quite an uh, insightful uh, suggestion. And, uh, and then the last commentator is that, uh, to the comment, uh, the comment to uh, uh, Professor John's paper, and the uh, commentator is uh, Helen, uh, Professor Lim, and uh, he uh, uh, is the uh, Professor of uh, uh, Department of 
political science and international relations, so National University. Please. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Heran Lim, professor uh, in the Department of Political Science and International Relations in Seoul National University. Um, uh, I'm also very interested in this uh, subject, the uh, developmental state in, in East Asia. So this uh, session was very uh, interesting and uh, informative uh, for me as well as other uh, audiences. Um, let me briefly uh, show you the summary of this uh, paper. Um, well, um, most of us uh, actually focused on the, the developmental state, uh, East Asia developmental state in terms of the characteristics and uh, uh, the perspectives from uh, outside. Uh, but this uh, paper intended to uh, tell us detailed story of uh, uh, societal movement um, uh, and also intends to uh, imagine the future for Korean uh, capitalism by focusing on the debates, ideological debates of Korean uh, politics and capitalism since 1980s. And, um, and also uh, the author uh, tried to uh, focus more on the uh, role of ideology, role of idea debates uh, in uh, the process of uh, Korean uh, history and Korean capitalism. Um, Uh, so, and then he, uh, the, the author tried to uh, uh, give us some uh, uh, name in each period. In 1980s, uh, uh, it was seen as age of revolution. Uh, and in 1990s, uh, age of culture. And in 2000, age of money. And then he, he uh, very well depict the, the complicated reality of Korean society. Um, by focusing on key uh, concept. Uh, in 1980s, uh, this is the age of uh, revolution. And then there, there are uh, various uh, kinds of movement uh, in civil society as well as in economy and politics. And, and also he tried to show us how uh, specific uh, radical intellectual um, uh, groups uh, had debated on the uh, causes and the uh, future of Korean uh, capitalism by uh, looking at the contradictions and crisis of Korean uh, uh, capitalism. Mm, and in 1990s, he uh, focused on the, the, mm, the age of culture enjoying capitalism uh, of consumerist Korea. Um, actually, Korea Capitalism became to be enjoyed rather than overcome, and but this this era uh, came to an end with the 1997 crisis. So in 2000, after the 1997 Asian crisis, um, there are another uh, round of debates uh, about the causes of East Asian crisis, and that the author uh, gave us three different explanations. First one, uh, as he already mentioned. Uh, uh, the neoliberal uh, lack lack of neoliberalism. Second one also uh, the uh, lack of neoliberal uh, uh, principles. But third one um, is the reconstructing DS model. Uh, but, but I had some questions in these three different explanations. And the first and the second, in terms of the um, the method and the tools for overcoming the current uh, issues, uh, it, it's not uh, really clear uh, why uh, he uh, provides us with these two different explanations uh, with the similar argument, the, the neoliberal uh, principles, by, by emphasizing neoliberal principles. So I, I want to uh, hear the, the, the answer. Well, uh, questions? Uh, Actually, uh, this paper is very illuminating and informative uh, to understand the detailed history of social movement uh, in the process of Korean, uh, uh, the change of Korean capitalism and Korean politics. And 
But um, I like to know uh, the moving forces of this change. Uh, it seems to me that he uh, focused on more dialectical method. Uh, for, for instance, new period came out of the crisis, previous crisis and contradiction in Korean capitalism. Uh, so th that's why we had the uh, uh, 1990, the age of revolution and the transition uh, in the democratic regime. After that, we had a, a age of culture, but again, we had we had the Asian crisis in 1997. After the crisis, uh, many reforms had done in various sectors in Korean capitalism, and but still, we don't know which uh, path uh, we are uh, going to. Uh, we are moving forward uh, according to this logic of this paper. So I would like to know. Uh, what the author had in mind in terms of uh, moving force of this this move, this uh, change of Korean uh, capitalism, um, and so that is the first question: the the moving forces. The uh, second one already I already I had made. The third one is uh, he uh, suggests there are three various explanations regarding the causes of uh, financial crisis in 1997. But he didn't uh, uh, mention that which perspective was deemed as more persuasive, more plausible to understand the process of Asian crisis. Uh, because we, we should uh, at least know the more important uh, factors uh, in the process of a crisis. We could actually envision the future uh, future world of Korean capitalism, but he, uh, the author didn't mention about his position. And, and also, the, also he, since he uh, told us that he had focused on the domestic factors of crisis, but at that time in, in 1997 crisis, we also uh, may have to look at the external factors, such as the instability of global financial system. So, um, I mean, it could be better uh, if we be more new, uh, uh, more uh, look at it in both sides. And the, the other question I like to ask is uh, regarding the reconstruction of the uh, dual manner state model. If we uh, if we think that the third explanation is right or more persuasive, for instance, uh, the. Uh, uh, the, the excessiveness of liberalism uh, could be seen as uh, one of causes for East Asia, and then we may want to reconstruct the uh, developmental state model in the 21st century again. And then uh, I'd like to ask whether it is possible in a different international and domestic environment. For instance, we are living in uh, such a highly uh, competitive uh, or unlimited competition in trade and uh, production, finance and uh, uh, mon money. And, and also, uh, unlike the uh, situations where uh, the East Asian development state had been uh, favored by the uh, benign trade environment provided by the, uh, the United States hegemon during, during the fast growing period. So I would like to ask whether it is possible to uh, reconstruct the DS model in such a different world. And also, we are living in, in democratized uh, regime in, in, in domestic sense. And so oh, how uh, do we rephrase, reconstruct the, the, the concrete uh, concept of developmental state model uh, in 21st uh, period? And, and final uh, question is, the DS model is historically specific and unique, some may say. <laughs> and then it, it may be very uh, impossible to apply this uh, model to uh, other cases, such as late, late developing countries, uh, for instance, the African countries. And so, well, it is a little bit uh, remote uh, uh, question, but I'd like to hear uh, he, he, what he uh, thinks. And, and fi final uh, question that I want to ask is that uh, in, in this paper, uh, it, it was very hard to find out some kind of theoretical framework. Uh, so I, I thought that the, 
this, uh, uh, this paper could be rephrased into uh, as follows, like the role of uh, ideas or ideology or ideological debates in the process of uh, Korean capitalism so that, so that he could show us how domestic discourses of diverse ideas uh, are affected in the process of uh, changes in Korean capitalism and uh, political development. Uh, thank you. So before I uh, reply to uh, this insightful comment, uh, let us have some uh, question and uh, suggestion from uh, floors. So uh, uh, do you have any uh, question or suggestion? Please. <laughs> Must be. Okay, so uh, let's uh, move to the uh, reply part. So uh, first, uh, Thomas, please. Yes, so thank you very much for the uh, comments. And of course, you correctly pointed out, I think, main weakness still of the draft, kind of when we or I try to put together like the, my, my previous research on um, comparative capitalism in, in Korea with the research on development cooperation, and it still doesn't 100% uh, fit together. Um, so I will definitely work on improving this. Um, about the negative connotations of the developmental state, well, I, uh, I, don't, I don't have them. I mean, I'm not from the US, I'm from Germany, so I think, um, and Japan, as we all know, learned a lot from the German development experience as well. So I don't have these negative uh, connotations at all. I, I also believe that there could be some kind of democratic uh, developmental state, but that's not the way it happened in, uh, in, in, in Korea. Um, I rather use developmental state kind of as a term and as a tool to, to understand Korean and East Asian development as well. Like as I explained, the combination of industrial policy, state planning, um, plus the strong coalition, development coalition between the state and business. And here I would say that's not working in the same way uh, as it did in, in the past. Um, and then, of course, there's a debate, and this leads me to the second and maybe second weak point, uh, defining institutional uh, retreat. Maybe the most crucial point of my presentation was, was quite weak. Um, so we talked about simply, you know, institutions of the developmental state being replaced by or displaced by liberal institutions, particularly when we uh, talk about the period of the 1990s and then particularly following the um, uh, Asian financial crisis with the IMF uh, in Korea. Um, and then also we heard others talk about uh, more things like institutional layering or uh, where new institutions are layered upon the, the old ones, more liberal institutions layered upon the more traditional ones from the developmental state time, leading to more like hybrid uh, regime. And um, so like separating my own uh, research from this, I use this term institutional retreat where institutions and patterns of behavior that became dysfunctional or at least they don't work as well anymore in the original context, Korean developmental state, then retreat to a new area, policy area, and in this case uh, development uh, cooperation of Korea. And But I also thought, of course, of other um, of other examples. I mean, we could think of other examples where such an institutional retreat is, is happening. Uh, for example, I thought about issues like uh, performance, performance paid, uh, uh, performance based payment, uh, which was had a very disastrous uh, consequence uh, in banking and in the financial sector, contributing to the financial crisis since uh, 2008. But then also is kind of, um, uh, and has been challenged since then in this sector. There's been a lot of regulation, regulating um, uh, bonus systems in the financial sector. But at the, at the same time, uh, this 
performance-based uh, pay is now very com common in other sectors like manufacturing and even uh, universities. I mean, now uh, Korean professors are uh, paid uh, to a large degree how much they pu publish, right? <laughs> and uh, we might be happy about that uh, on the one hand, but also it will <laughs> probably have other negative consequences, but I, I don't... Uh, so you publish what is publishable, but maybe not what is what is really relevant. Um, but um, I don't want to go <laughs> on about this. Um, and then, so this is about the institutional retreat, but I absolutely agree. I really have to try and define this, to, to make this really a, a, um, not just a publishable, but a relevant contribution. I have to... Uh, um, define this much better. And then finally, the, um, the question about is Korea exceptional in the way it conducts developmental uh, cooperation? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, and also that's not what I'm trying to claim here. Um, I do, you mentioned, yeah, Western countries, of course, they, they used and they still use, um, but particularly in the past, um, they use their development cooperation in similar ways, ways and their cooperation with developing countries in similar ways to, to help uh, foreign investment and, and trade, etc. Um, there is no um, doubt about that. That's not what I'm trying to claim. But the difference is that the, the norms that also Korea has subscribed to in the, within the OECD DAC now um, that have been shaped by the Western powers, which don't need this kind of support for foreign investment uh, anymore because they are already there. Uh, they are already um, active in, uh, in, in Africa. Korea is not, so it would need this kind of, companies would need this kind of support to penetrate the markets and to get into the African markets. But now this kind of the same behavior that was totally okay for the Western uh, countries in the past uh, is now a problem under the OECD DAC. And that I think, and again, I don't, I don't think that's an ex uh, excuse to, to break the rules, but it's, um, it's maybe, it could be a starting point to rediscuss these uh, global rules, and I hope Korea could play an active role in, uh, in this discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, then uh, Professor Kim. Uh, your comment uh, with some uh, useful suggestions. Uh, whether China model uh, can be classified into East Asian developed model is uh, really controversial. Uh, however, uh, in my view, uh, as uh, Professor Lin uh, presented this morning, uh, uh, Chinese capitalism is a kind of a centrally managed capitalism. And in some sense, Korean capitalism was, has been uh, centrally managed capitalism. So, uh, in my view, uh, we can compare uh, three countries, the, the Japan model and the Korean model, and the China model, and including these three countries model into a, a uh, a unique type of uh, uh, East Asian uh, developed model. And uh, uh, how, how can define uh, the, uh, the uh, characteristics of a state after 1997's financial crisis? It would be also controversial. Uh, I think that the there was a retreat uh, uh, of a developmental state uh, uh, in considerable degree, but the uh, developmental state did not disappear completely. So some scholars say that uh, uh, after crisis, uh, state uh, type is uh, a kind of a democratic uh, development, developmental state. Uh, I'm not sure about this, but anyway, uh, when uh, there was a conservative government, uh, uh, the type of state uh, uh, inclined toward the uh, neoliberal state, and uh, uh, more uh, progressive, uh, when more 
prosperous uh, state uh, uh, established, uh, government established, uh, the type of state uh, uh, inclined toward the uh, democratic uh, state. So now the political situation in Korea is very complicated and very unstable. So uh, the type, the constant or constant type of state uh, uh, could not uh, establish uh, uh, now until now. And uh, you uh, argue that uh, uh, so I, I, I uh, regard highly the Sweden model and the German model. Anyway, uh, I showed you a figure of a flexibility, flexibility triangle. Actually, flexibility model is basically, basically originated from uh, Denmark uh, or Danish model. So uh, as an alternative, progressive alternative, I think flexibility model uh, is uh, a uh, promising uh, uh, alternative for Korea. But uh, as you, as you uh, uh, said, uh, in order to uh, realize a uh, flexibility model, uh, we should have a strong labor union, but a very flexible la uh, labor union. Strong, but uh, flexible labor union. Uh, union should uh, uh, have policy uh, of uh, social consensus policy, of social consensus policy. Uh, however, uh, democratic uh, union in Korea is not uh, going toward uh, social consensus policy. Uh, instead, they are trying to uh, go toward uh, another type of uh, uh, system. Uh, formerly, it was uh, uh, so a kind of socialist system, as Professor Zhang said. Anyway, uh, they lose the vision, uh, lost the vision uh, now. So uh, the climate of labor, uni uh, labor movement is not so clear, and it's very complicated. So, uh, so in Korea, there is a kind of a stalemate uh, uh, of uh, the new development model, uh, and uh, so uh, it is very difficult to realize an uh, uh, alternative model. Uh, it is uh, the Korean situation. It is very uh, sad news. Eh? Anyway, and uh, as, you, as you said, income policy is a necessary condition for uh, flexibility policy. However, uh, in order to uh, implement income policy, uh, we should have uh, a tripartite uh, uh, so social consensus between state uh, and labor and capital, but there, there are no such an social consensus now in Korea. Uh, that is a problem. Uh, in my paper, I just only tried to uh, present the tr transformation and uh, sustain sustainability conditions uh, I did not try to suggest uh, the alternative model. Uh, actually, this is my research field, but uh, in this paper, I could not uh, uh, describe uh, about the alternative model. Anyway, your suggestion was very, very useful to our uh, study. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Kim. Then, uh, lastly, uh, uh, Professor Jam. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this paper uh, was more about uh, the historiography or the social history. So there is no clear uh, theoretical framework. But uh, based on uh, the Professor Lim's suggestion, I'm also thinking about uh, having some uh, theoretical paradigm such as uh, the institutionalism, uh, in particular uh, ideational institutionalism, which emphasizes the role of uh, idea, norm, and values. And also, uh, she suggested how to reconstruct the so-called developmental state in this age of uh, transition or 
the, in a different situation internationally and domestically. Yeah, that, that is also the problem, yeah. But some uh, scholars, including Peter Evans, uh, even suggest Austria as a uh, different uh, version of uh, the could be developmental state uh, combined with uh, social uh, corporatism uh, and even uh, the Australian or German scholar Linda Weiss, Linda Wies, she also suggested even Germany as a kind of uh, developmental state, not only uh, on East Asian stage. So, uh, uh, as uh, her book title suggests, uh, we can uh, imagine uh, the power of the state still uh, mattered, even though we cannot uh, exaggerate the power of the state. Yeah, and also uh, other uh, points Professor Lim suggested, I will uh, think more about them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it's uh, time to stop. Now, uh, okay, so uh, please. Yes, please. I, I have some uh, comment on Karinovsky, Thomas paper. Actually, you answer to my questions, uh, uh, answering to Professor Zhang, but I wanted to put my two cents, just simply two points. One is the, about the uh, title of the paper and the main, main concept, this de uh, developmental cooperation, cooperation. From the title, I was kind of confused. It's uh, from developmental state to developmental cooperation. But I think these two concepts are kind of different level. So how can you uh, mix or um, associate, associate and uh, differentiate these two uh, different uh, dimension or level of concepts? So that's a little bit confusing. I think from your uh, explanation, I understood that, that you say this is kind of development state to institutional retreat or uh, need making or creating some new niche or new arena. Uh, yeah, so I understand. But from that, my point, the second point is coming here. So uh, this is a very different approach actually because developmental state or a variety of capitalism, comparative capitalist study, it is all about the national capitalism, national variety of capitalism. But you, your, your studying of this ODA um, ODA or aid, uh, international aid is uh, it's a different uh, issue, I think. Uh, it's like you are, you are actually kind of uh, distorting or maybe uh, making new <laughs> approach on development state. So I think it's, it needs more theoret uh, theoretical, you know, the caution, uh, precaution here. And uh, so, the second question is your conclusion, your implication. It's too, I think it's not too analytical, rather it's kind of normative <laughs> uh, in, in a sense. So I think this is, a, how can you differentiate these kind of new don donors like China and South Korea from Western Europe or new, uh, uh, the Pacific Rim area country like Australia and the United States, I think this, these are very not different. So they also insert, uh, the mingle this international aid to their national interest and they insert their national interest to overseas investment actually. Not just the, the financial capitalism but also national you know, agency also do that. So I think it's maybe new donors learned from those old traditional donors. So I think how can you depress? Maybe if you can, you have some other idea I wanted to hear about that. But if not so, I think we cannot depress it actually. So that's, I think, too little, too bit normal argument. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Well, yes, thank you very much again for the, uh, for the comments. And yeah, I mean, uh, you're right. Um, I mean, okay, starting from the last uh, question, I think I already mentioned a couple of uh, aspects, but um, you're absolutely right. All countries, they mix kind of their, or their national interest plays a very important role in their relationships with developing countries, including the way they conduct uh, their ODA, absolutely. I don't think Korea in this sense is in any way uh, different. The difference is that the interest is uh, different. Um, so uh, Korea uh, has to kind of, because as a latecomer, and I mean, kind of similar to what uh, Gershenkron earlier said, the later you come in development, the more active the state has to be. You could say the same thing for the foreign investment and the way you conduct a development uh, a cooperation. The later you come, in um, investing in Africa, the more active state and business have to work together. Um, that is, so in this sense, there is no difference that um, uh, the, the role of the national interest plays here, but it, it is a different. Korea needs a different strategy, and this strategy is not compatible with um, the OECD DAC norms. And Korea has uh, become a member of the OECD DAC. I mean, they could have chosen to stay outside, for example. Then they would have not to subscribe to these kind of norms and do whatever they like, right? But now that they are in, um, I think it would be more productive to um, start a discussion and I hope to what is really in the OECD DAC norms, what is really relevant, and there has been, um, I mean, these, these norms are there for a certain uh, reason. That is because Western development cooperation, development aid in the past has not worked very well. Uh, right, so um, that's why these places, uh, these um, uh, new norms that uh, focus a lot on, on governance, on, on untying aid, uh, grants, etc., etc., have been put in place. But now there is this conflict between the way Korea conducts development cooperation and these glo global norms. And I'm interested in that, that's one of my many interests, how to solve this, uh, this problem. And I think that could be, Korea could play a very crucial role in really identifying which of the OECD norms, which of the norms generally guiding development cooperation are really, which ones we should keep and which one are just there because they come like from the Western context but don't uh, fit with the new donor countries like, like Korea. So yeah, I just hope that there would be um, that there would be a discussion about about this. Okay. So uh, let's stop. And uh, so thank you so much for uh, presentator and the commentator. So why don't we have a big hands? Uh, thank you. Thank you for your cooperation.